Good afternoon, everybody. Well, fellow Kenyans, this morning I chaired the sixth extraordinary session of the National and County Governments Summit. And our, our agenda today, as you all know, was focusing that we made in December of this year. So today we interrogated our performance during the last 38 days done and what could we have done better. We then uh, went through the process of reviewing where our strengths lie and where are our weaknesses and how can we forge ahead in the coming months. Today being the 38th day since we eased the COVID measures of 27th of September, we must agree this year to 7% in July and to a low of 4% in September. Our COVID bed occupancy had also gone down by 60%. We had flattened the curve to below a 5% positivity rate that is recommended by the World Health Organization. And it is these factors that gave us the courage to reopen and to ease out COVID measures in order to boost our economy. But ladies and gentlemen, 38 days later, it is most unfortunate that we have experienced a reversal, a serious one at that. If our COVID bed occupancy had gone down by 60%, giving us the comfort to reopen as we did in September, the occupancy of our COVID beds has now gone up by 140%. And this just during the last 38 days. The COVID positivity rate that we were all very happy and excited about when it dropped to 4% in September has now shot up to an incredible 16% in the month of October. This is four times what it was in September. And what does this translate to? What it means is that in September, if one person was positive in, in October, it means four people. That is almost three times the rate and fellow Kenyans this increase only at days. In October alone, we had over 15,000 new cases of corona infections and approximately 300 deaths. And these statistics coming from gone down as the most tragic month in our fight against COVID. We are now staring at a new wave of this pandemic. And the question we must all ask ourselves, although the second wave of this pandemic we accept is a global affair, the last eight months
have taught us a few lessons that are useful in combating this new surge. Firstly, our most successful fight against the virus was recorded after the measures we took on the July 27th, 2020. The very stringent measures saw a new fall in new cases from 4,720 during the first week of July this year to 866 new cases during the second week of September 2020. But when we de-escalated measures in accordance with the wishes of many Kenyans, we rec our cases rose from that 866 low to 6,402 6, cases by the last week of October 2020. These figures, fellow Kenyans, suggest a correlation between stringent measures and a drop in infections. They suggest that in order to heal our country in the long run, we must and have to make some sacrifices in the short run. The second point is that the last eight months have taught us also that the exercise of civic responsibility is a central plank in the war against this pandemic. Between June and end of September, the country witnessed a heightened level of public awareness and public restraint. Our country witnessed a high level of observation of COVID protocols, and we were aware and took our civic responsibility seriously. But after de-escalating the measures at the end of September, we as Kenyans seem to have backtracked from the practices that we learned in the early stages of this pandemic. And all of this built around the false notion that because the curve was flattening, the country was now safe and we could go back to normal behavior. And indeed, it was for this very same reason that I wore in my last COVID address that what seems like a victory in September could become a big liability in October. And in fact, this is what has happened. And at the same time, I said happens at the point when victory is in sight. And this is why I emphasized that to win the overall war, the citizens have to exercise the civic duty observing the COVID protocols. The third lesson of the last eight months has also to do with enforcement. Over this period, it cannot be gainsaid that the public, for lack of a better word, and with this fatigue, public responsiveness to COVID protocols has also greatly reduced. And this has resulted in the overstretching of enforcement agencies, basically reducing their efficacy and their ability to do their job. But I remind you once again, fellow Kenyans, as I mentioned during my 10th COVID address, that the government does not have the ability to police the morality of its citizens. 
We will double our enforcement efforts. But it is you, the public, that will play the most critical role. You must remember that it is not my government's desire to close down our economy. We want our country to remain open. But whether or not we will remain open shall ultimately depend on the public's responsiveness to COVID protocols. The fourth, and as I mentioned to the COVID summit today, this moment also provides a unique call to leadership. And although public and civic responsiveness are critical to fighting the rise of COVID numbers, leadership is what will, resolve, will, will reverse this escalation. And from where I sit, if the public has backslidden from its vigilant flight fight against the pandemic, this has been occasioned in part by the diminishing stamina on the part of our leaders and for us not leading by example. If the nation is succumbing to the fatigue created by the virus, and my call to action is for them to rise to the occasion and for them to help navigate through the uncertainties of this pandemic. And while at it, we must recognize that this is not a time for popular decisions. In order to appease the public, we must choose the bold over the popular if we are truly to serve our people. So therefore, fellow Kenyans, and on the recommendations of the National Security Advisory Committee, the National Emergency Response Committee, and with the concurrence of the sixth extraordinary session of the national and county governments, the protocol is that today I direct that all cabinet secretaries, chief administrative secretaries, and principal secretaries to scale down all in-person engagement within officers through virtual means where possible. Two, similarly, and to protect government staffers drawn from vulnerable groups, I expect that all public officers aged above 58 years or who are immunocompromised to work remotely. This with the exemption of those serving the nation in critical sectors. Number three, with respect to the examination class, classes that have already resumed learning, I hereby order that they continue with their learning and examination prepared preparations, but under heightened health safety measures, and with that, also order that all basic education classes resuming in-person learning. Four, to foster the state's preparedness towards the reopening of all classes in our learning institutions in January. I urge and encourage members of parliament to engage their respective GAF and CDF boards with a, with a view of finding ways to augment the existing interventions that are geared towards the reopening of our schools. 
I urge them to make investments that focus on additional high points in our schools, on general sanitization in our schools, political gatherings and rallies are suspended for a period of 60 days and this to take effect immediately. Anyone wishing to hold such meetings to 1 third meeting capacity of the hall and the wearing of face masks. And that six to enforce compliance at both the national and county levels, I direct the Ministry of Interior to constitute a special enforcement unit made up of the National Police Service, the National Government Administration Officers, or nationwide curfew is extended up to the 3rd of January 2021. And eight, that beginning tonight, the 4th of November, the curfew will now be enforced between 10 p.m. of the 10 p.m. curfew, all bars, restaurants, and other establishments open to the public by 9 p.m. 10. In view of the restrictions within the hospitality sector, I further urge all operators of hotels, restaurants, eateries, bars, clients with the Ministry of Health's Guidelines and protocols, and those who fail will have their establishments immediately shut down. Eleven, indoor religious gathering, other than for the purpose of a wedding or a funeral, shall have no more than one third of its normal seating capacity occupied at a given city. The Ministry of Health guidelines remain in force. The Ministry of Interior and Coordination of National Government is hereby directed to ensure strict enforcement and those who fail to meet those requirements will be stopped from further gatherings. And 12, county governments to maintain isolation facilities in a state of preparedness through continuous capacity building for healthcare workers, provision of adequate PPEs for healthcare workers, and continuous implementation of infection prevention control measures and the provision of pipes or portable oxygen. Thirteen. I want to make it abundantly clear where the of COVID-19 cases in a specific county, the national government will consult the affected county to issue localized lockdowns and movement restrictions as may be necessary to stem the spread of the disease. Fourteen, county governments and other relevant government agencies to enhance and strictly enforce all public health social measures, including hand washing, social distancing, and mandatory wearing of masks in public places. And to enhance responsibility, the national government and county governments 
have today resolved that going forward, services will not be rendered to anyone who does not abide by the Ministry of Health protocols. And in that regard, I call on the private sector to join the government in the public sensitization campaign dubbed No Mask, No Service. Bila Barakoa, Hakuna Huduma. This applies to the market. This applies to all places where public must continue to conduct service, and as I said, in the spirit of wanting to remain open. But those who fail, we will not hesitate to shut down markets. We will not hesitate to shut Fellow Kenyans, I want to conclude by emphasizing again that our staying power in the fight against this pandemic should not succumb to COVID fatigue of the health protocols. Goes up, enforcement becomes easy. Finally, I want to once again return to the issue of leadership. Without leadership, civic responsiveness to COVID protocols, and all the necessary actions to beat this pandemic will amount to nothing. And that is why today I call on all my fellow leaders to stand out and be, if the latter is good for our people and for our country. Sitaki niseme zaidi ya hayo, sipokuwa. Tena kusema wenzangu wa Kenya, huu ugonjwa wa tukonao. Pamoja, tulitembea hii barabara miezi ya mwanzo kule mwanzoni. Mpaka tukafika wakati kwa sababu serikali na wananchi pamoja tuliweza kutimiza jukumu letu kama wananchi tukaweza pamoja kuhakikisha ya kwamba tumefuata sheria ambayo tulikuwa tumepatiwa na wataalamu wetu wa kiafya na kwa sababu ya vile tulitembea pamoja tukaweza muda mchache kwa sababu tulikuwa tumecontain huu ugonjwa tukaweza tena sasa kuanza kufungua kuwezesha wa Kenya na nchi yetu kurudi kazini na kuanza tena kufufua uchumi wetu ni wenzangu wakati tulifanya hivyo badala kuende, badala ya kuendelea na ile taratibu tulikuwa naye badala ya kuendelea na ile taratibu ya kujikinga na kujikinga wenzako karudi ni tuondokee vile tuwaongea leo ni wengi ambao wananiangalia kwa runinga ama wananisikiliza kwa redio ambao wanajua moja ama mwingine ambaye ameaga kwa sababu ya hii ugonjwa na nikisema huu ugonjwa unaendelea kuenea nawaambia kwa uhaki kuna wengine wanasema ugonjwa uliisha ugonjwa hauko ah kule kuna kule hakuna mimi nataka kuambia ni wakenya tusichukue uhuru ambao tuko nao uhuru wa vyombo vya habari uhuru wa wananchi kuwezwa na viongozi wao wa serikali uhaki 
wa kile ambacho unaendelea alafu mujipime na wengine ambao hawaongei ukweli ya yale ambayo yanaendelea katika nchi zao haya ndiyo yanaendelea hatufichi na hatufichi kwa sababu jukumu la kwanza la serikali ni kuhakikisha tumelinda maisha ya wananchi wetu na tu hatuwezi kufanya hivyo tukiwa hatutawaambieni ukweli kwa hivyo tusijilinganishe na mtu yeyote tusiseme kule huko hivi hapa huko hivi hapana angalieni ukweli na vile nimesema najua kwamba hakuna mtu hakuna mjawe, mzee ambaye ameangamia kwa sababu ya huu ugonjwa na ni jukumu letu kuhakikisha ya kwamba tumejilinda na tumelinda wale ambao tunapenda na mimi nawaomba kwa heshima kwa heshima kubwa sana wa Kenya wenzangu ya kwamba hatutaki kurudi nyuma hatutaki kufunga inchi tena hatutaki uchumi wetu sasa urudi nyuma hatutaki watu yetu wa, wa, wawe hawana na uwezo wa kwenda kazi na kupata riski yao ya siku na hiyo yote itategemea vile wewe binafsi utafanya na vile we mwenyewe utachukua jukumu hiyo yako kibinafsi kibinafsi kusema ni jukumu langu kuhakikisha ya kwamba nimepambana na huu ugonjwa na nimehakikisha sijapatia mwenzangu sijapatia bibi yangu sijapatia watoto wangu sijapatia mamangu sijapatia babangu na hiyo ni kulingana na vile we mwenyewe utajitunza ndio uweze kutunza wenzako na mimi sitaki niwadanganye na nilisema hapo katika hiyo speech nimesoma ya kwamba hata sisi kama viongozi tumeanguka mtihani tumeanguka mtihani ni kwa sababu hata sisi vile tumekuwa tukijiendesha ni kama hakuna ugonjwa mikutano bila barakoa kulete watu pamoja bila social distancing na mambo hiyo mambo hayo yametuumiza na ndipo leo pia na waomba pia viongozi tuongoze kwa mstari wa mbele tusiwe watu ambao tunaongea lakini tunatenda mengine kwa sababu wananchi wanaangalia ni jukumu letu kutenda yale na kufanya yale ambayo tunaambia wananchi wetu wafuate na tutachukua hatua kwa yeyote ambaye hatafuata ama ni nani tuasema maisha ya wakenya kwanza mambo mengine baadaye kwa hivyo wakenya wenzangu ni waombe tena nikimalizia tafadhali tuje pamoja tupambane na hii jangwa la corona tuimalize kati yetu na tuweze kuendelea na shughuli zetu za kikawaida kama wakenya lakini tusipofanya hivyo na huu ugonjwa uendelee kuenea na kuchukua maisha ya wananchi wetu hatakuwa na budi isipokuwa kwenda zaidi afanye yale ambayo anatakikana kwa hivyo nawaomba tufanye kwa hiari yetu tufanye kwa sababu ya mapenzi ambayo tuko nayo na wakenya wenzetu tusijipende tusahau tuko na wenzetu 
tujikumbuke kama wakenya na tutembee barabara hii kama wakenya na tusaidiane kama wakenya na nyinyi wenzetu waandishi wa habari yangu ni kuwaomba kutambua yule amekataa kufuata yule kiongozi ame expose us show us out show us out call us out even we as leaders if we fail in doing and practicing that which we preach because that is the only way we shall save our country that is the only way we shall deal with this disease nasema asanteni sana na nikimalizia kwa sababu niko na coach chairman wangu hapa ningependa aseme jambo moja ama mbili kwa sababu yeye ndio coach ya wangu wa summit karibu chairman uh, weekly for operanya chairman wa council of governors na governor wa county ya Kakamega asanteni ya mheshimiwa rais na wale CS wako hapa na mwenzangu um, governor Machakos nataka nichukue fursa hii nikushukuru sana ule uongozi ambao umeonyesha wakati huu ambapo tunapikana na changa la corona kwa mikutano karibu saba kwa wakati mfupi sana tukiongea haya mambo ya corona na mambo mengine ambayo yamekumba uh, inji yetu ya Kenya na sasa leo sisi kama magovernors tunakuunga mkono tumekubaliana kwa sababu hatutaki watu wetu shall continue supporting you on this particular issue we are committed to it and we